All right, everyone. This is the um, lecture on the probability rules that we started um, yesterday in class. And we'll go into a little bit more depth um, today so that you can have um, some videos to look at in addition to that reading assignment that's on Canvas. So just an introduction to probability terms. Probability, as we discussed, refers to the long-term frequency of an event's occurrence. Um, so it's a way for us to um, try to predict what will happen in the future. The, t the um, annotation that we use, capital P of parentheses A, is equal to the probability of event A. Um, trial is a single attempt, so if we were rolling a um, a, a coin or flipping a coin, um, one t one flip would equal a trial. Um, the outcome is the value that's measured of the trial, so that would be either heads or tails. Um, <clears throat> and the event is the collection of all of those possible outcomes. So um, it would be the probability, if we were to do the probability of event A, it would be the probability, what's the likelihood um, of getting um, a head or of a tail. The sample space, which is another one, um, is another term that I didn't use, but it's in your that textbook reading, um, is all possible outcomes or all possible events. Um, um, the collection of all of them together um, listed out. So you could have heads or tails if you're flipping one coin. If you're flipping two coins, it could be two heads, one head, one tail, two tails, etc. Um, so probability is always between zero and one. Um, we can't have 150% probability, um, 100% or a probability of one is the max. Um, so all of the, that entire sample space, all of the possible outcomes is between zero and one. Um, we also use the term complement of a probability. Um, so that's the, the likelihood that the event does not occur. And since all um, the probability is, um, between zero and one, we take one minus that probability of event um, to get the complement of A. So if we're rolling a dice um, and our probability of getting a so one would be one sixth. Um, and so the, the complement of that would be five sixths because we have a five sixth chance of not getting a one. The first one um, this is the addition rule, um, and that's the probability of A or B. So anytime we have this, what looks like a U right here, um, that means or. So this is the probability of A or B. And if they're disjoint events, ones that you can't be one or the other, like it could be a red M&M or a blue M&M, um, then you just add those probabilities up. So probability of A plus the probability of B. Um, if A is A equals um, blue M&Ms and B equals orange, um, and I think that was 0.2 and 0.2, so the probability of a blue or um, P of A Um, or B is equal to 0 0.2 plus 0.2, which equals 0.4. So um, I think that was about what our data from the M&M experiment, experiment showed yesterday. So looking here at this example, there are 64 students at BMA this year, 17 are FIS men athletes and 19 are FIS women athletes. Um, what is the probability of a student that a student that you randomly see on campus is a FIS athlete? So you can stop the video and try to answer that and then start it when you're up or you're ready. So going into this, um, going through the whole, um, all of the notation that we would use, we would do P of A equals um, probability this man P 
of B equals probability this woman. Are these mutually exclusive? Yes, you can't be a man and a woman. Um, so we're going to do P of A plus P of B, which equals 17 over 64 plus 19 over 64. Because this is just the relative frequency. There are 17 fist men out of a total um, 64 and then students and then 19 students are fist women um, and that gives us 36 over 64 which equals um i'd have to do some addition 9 divided by 16. um for our reduced fraction, and we could do it into a decimal, but I think I would need to get out my calculator to do that. I need a better eraser from this pen to do this more quickly. Um, we went through this last time. If those aren't non-disjoint, not mutually exclusive, we do the probability of event A plus the probability of event B minus the probability of A and B. Um, anytime, so this equals or, um, or sorry, equals and, and the U equals or. So this is important here. The upside down u or n equals and, um, u equals or. So probability of a plus the probability um, of b minus the probability of a and b, um, where there's that intersection, um, is equal to the probability of a or b when they're not mutually exclusive. So 19, again, um, 19 fist women athletes on campus. 33 um, athletes on campus total, or female athletes on campus. What is the probability that an athlete is a female or a fist woman? Remember, you can do be both of these at the same time. So in that case, it would, and remember we again have 16. Um, so, or 60, sorry, we have 64. So we're looking at probability of A or B, but they're not, mutually exclusive, so it's probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So probability of A, we're going to make this fist um, A would be 19 over 64 plus 33 over 64. Um, how many are both fist women and female athletes? Try to figure that one out. Minus, okay, turn the video on again when you're ready. That would be 14 over 64, um, because that is, if you take 33, subtract 19, you know there's 33, you know 19, so we can assume 14 are fists, or are U16s. Um, and in this case, 19 plus 33 is 42, minus 14 um, is 28 over 64. Um, so you can kind of think of it as, this would be our fist women. Um, these are our female athletes. We want to make sure we're subtracting out the intersection there between the two. Um, 
Um, moving on, independent events, one does not affect the outcome of another. If you um, put our M&Ms back in the, the cup, you have the equal likelihood of getting every color um, because you haven't changed your little sample that you have. Where a dependent, if you took an M&M um, and ate it and you ate out all your red M&Ms first because that was your favorite, um, you have less likelihood of getting a red M&M if you were picking those out and eating the red ones one after another. So dependent um, affects the outcome of another one. Um, so the multiplication rule that we're going to use today um, is for probabilities of, remember this is and, so probability of A and B um, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. But this only works for the independent events. Um, so it has to be independent. There's another formula that we'll learn on another day for if they're dependent. So if it's not independent, we just don't have the tools yet to use that. So the airline states that if flights arrive on time, 85% of the time, you fly once per week. What is the likelihood that the flights are on time this week and next week? So I'm gonna assume that this is independent. Um, maybe if it was a flight one day, one flight and then the next flight you took on that same day, um, perhaps they would be dependent because of weather or even two days, but a week apart, we're gonna call those um, dependent or independent events. So we can use the probability. Um, just the normal P of A and B. Um, we're looking for both this week and next week. So we have an 85% chance, 0.85 times 0.85 equals, get my phone out to do that one. I was a little past my um, mental math skills. 0.7225. Notice that the, pro the probability has gone down um, because you're multiplying two decimals next to each other. Um, next problem, and again, you roll the die, same die, you roll the same die five times. What's the probability that you will roll all fives? So for this one, um, are these independent events? Yes. Um, one roll does not affect what the next roll is. You have an equal likelihood. You still have a one-sixth chance. Take time, um, stop the video, and try to figure this one out and come back when you're ready. All right. So now we're doing probability of A um, times probability of B times probability of C times probability of D times probability of E. So each of these letters is one roll. Um, we use the same multiplication um, uh, all the way out for each event. So it doesn't have to be just one trial um, or two trials. It can be multiple, many trials. Um, so what's the probability of all fives? Um, well, one five is a one sixth chance. You have a one sixth chance on a six sided die of rolling a die times one sixth times one sixth times one sixth times one sixth. And you multiply those together six times and that will get you your probability. And you'll notice that it's much smaller than the um, probability of one roll because each time it's less likely that you're gonna get another five. At some point, you're gonna get um, a different one, a different number, most likely. But again, there's no law of averages, so it's not like you're due to get a different number, but it's unlikely that you will get that because um, you only have a one-sixth chance. Um, you pick a card from a deck and do not put it back in the deck afterwards. What is the likelihood that you would pick four aces in a row? So this one's a little trickier. Each one um, is a different role, but we can't just, how many, there are 52 cards in a deck. It isn't just, um... So you'd have a 
and there's four aces, so it'd be four over 52 um, times four over 52 times four over 52 times four over 52. Is that correct? Think about it a little bit. Stop the video if you need to, to talk about it. No, that is not correct. So the first time you have four aces and 52 cards, then you pull out one of those aces. Now you only have three aces left and 51 cards and two aces left and 50 cards. And then finally, that last roll, you have one ace left and only 49 cards left in the deck. Um, so you can see, and then we would multiply those all apart. So these are all still independent because each time you're taking a whole new card, but you need to make sure you have the accurate probability for each one. So a few more examples of the numbers listed below, which could be valid measures of probability. Stop the video and try to guess or ask, not guess, um, figure out this problem. Well, then we'll go through it. All right, so probabilities, remember, are between zero and one. This one, this is not. You can't have a negative probability. You could have zero. 54% is kind of like 0.54. Oh, we're over one. Two thirds, there are a lot of different ways. You know, we could do a decimal, a fraction, or a percent. One, no negatives, not over one. Um, that would be 1.18 and not two. So of those, those five were the, the, the correct options. Problem two, two roll, die are rolled exclusively, or to, uh, rolled together. Are the two following events mutually exclusive? Take a moment to think about it and then to stop the video. All right, so if we wanted to know what was the probability that it um, is either a total of 11 is rolled, if we're looking at the P of A or B, um, we'd want that to be mutually exclusive so we could find the total is 11. Um, or the pair is rolled. And yes, this is mutually exclusive because if a pair is rolled, it will be even. And so it can't be 11. Um, if it said the total is 10, um, a pair is rolled, those wouldn't be mutually exclusive. Um, following events independent, could we do that the first card is an ace of spade and the second card is an ace of spade? Um, it's put back into the deck. So yes, both of them could be an ace of spade. You're redrawing, taking a, a full independent draw of the cards. So yes, they are independent. Are they mutually exclusive? We'll let you think about that one and we can talk about it in class. Um, and then we won't go into this quite yet, so I'll stop here. Um, we'll go over this a little bit more um, in class on Friday over Zoom, um, but please reach out if you have any questions and you can start the problem set as well after listening to this audio um, or this video. Thanks um, and let me know if you guys have any questions.